Well, have you figured out what comes next? Well, there's a fairly obvious thing to do um, that uh, my son really likes, and that's just let's just decorate the right arrow with a number. Let's say right arrow 103, and say that that's equal to 3, right arrow 3, right arrow 3, dot, 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 100 arrows, or 100 to threes, I guess. Three. Okay. Actually, yeah. Um, so you could certainly do that. And this would be unimaginably bigger than, of course, than this, which is unimaginably huge. And then you could do this. You could say, oh, I think in the number of numbers we do, we should put in some right arrows in there because that's a pretty big number of right arrows and you could certainly do that but it kinda gets a little ad hoc at this point point. Um, and again this is not the dot dot dots is supposed to be out of the 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 kind of idea that we want we want something that's extremely elegant and so what I want to do is I actually want to go back to very very small numbers and simple operations for a minute and I'm gonna make contact with some more of the fundamental mathematics stuff um, but we're, don't worry we're gonna get back to big numbers pretty quickly okay so the fundamental operation of arithmetic all the arithmetic operations you might think it's uh, it's not exponentiation certainly that's repeated multiplication it's not multiplication that's repeated addition but addition isn't mo the most fun fundamental either it's successorship Okay, it's just the operation that takes n and produces out of it n plus 1. Now I write that with the addition symbol because it's kind of the standard easiest way to do it, but it's really much more fundamental than addition. It just means the next. It's really what kids learn to do when they're very, very young, when they're like two years old, three years old the most, is just count in sequence, one, two, three, four. The idea of just adding one repeatedly. Okay, so addition is just repeated successorship and we can write that down formally as if I have m plus n how do I figure what m plus n is well suppose you told me what m plus n was and I just wanted to get what m plus n plus 1 was well that's supposed to be m plus n plus 1 that looks like the associative law but it's actually much deeper it says that for example to add 7 to 3, if I have just previously added 6 to 3, I just need to go one more. And so if I always know just how to count one more, I can figure out how to add. And this is really how kids add on their fingers. You take 3 and you take 7 and you say, oh, I'm going to count 7 up from 3. I'm going to repeatedly do successorship 7 times. If you unpack this that many times, um, I'm even going to put in some parentheses. This might look familiar from the Conway Chain Darrow stuff. 3 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. This is really the basic of addition. It's really just 3 plus, and I'm going to drop parentheses, plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Uh, six, seven times. Okay. So addition is recursively defined in terms of successorship. If you ever take a class in um, there's the fundamentals of mathematics, either kind of m fundamentals for their own sake or uh, as like a undergraduate analysis class, sometimes you get to this, to this basic level. You talk about what's called Peano arithmetic. And the basic idea, the basic operation there is successorship. And everything can be defined recur in terms of recursion and successorship. So for example, multiplication is repeated addition so that says, um, you know, 3 times 7 is 3 times 3, or sorry, 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. And if there were more than 7 of these guys, I would need to do dot, dot, dots. Well, we know that dot, dot, dots are, are hiding a recursive definition. We've been looking at that with these very sophisticated, big, huge numbers. So really, it's 3 uh, times 6 plus another 3. If somebody already did this much of it for me, 
the six threes, then all I have to do is know how to add three to that, and I'm going to get the answer. And so three times seven is defined in terms of three times six, which is defined in terms of three times five, which is defined in terms of three times four, etc. And that's the recursive definition. Now, to be really careful about that, in each one I need a base case. Let me go back. The base case is just that um, m plus zero, oops, not capital, adding zero doesn't do anything. Zero is the fundamental starting point for everything. And of course, multiplying by zero, three times zero, is supposed to be zero. Once I've got that, I know how to do three times one because it's three times zero plus three. Oh, that's zero plus three. That's three. And then I know how to do three times two because that's plus three. I know how to do three times three, etc. Okay. And then, of course, where we kind of make contact with what we've done in the other videos, exponents are just repeated multiplication. Uh, I guess I need the colon there. Okay. And what is that more formally? a to the 0 is defined to be 1. And then a to the n plus 1 is a to the n times a. So that means I can figure out what any num a to any integer is, or any natural number is, by just doing this over and over again. So if you unpack that, you just get a times a times a times a dot 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 with n plus 1 a's in the sequence. n plus 1 a's. Okay, which is our familiar definition of exponents. But it's all about having a base case for the recursion and then a recursive definition in terms of the thing that's in the next lower rank of the uh, this order of operations. And then, of course, the double up arrow. That is repeated exponentiation. And that says that a double up n, well, a double up 0, um, let's see. Yeah, that works, right? I think so. Um, actually, 0 sometimes causes trouble at some point. So let's say a double up 1 just means a. And then a double up n plus 1 just means a to the a double up n. And if you expand that out, that just gives us the definition of double up that we had before. So for example, um, a double up 4 is a to the a double up 3, but that's equal to a to the a to the a double up 2. Uh, I'm trying to find the right place to return here. A to the a to the, and then a double up 2 is supposed to be a to the a double up 1. I think the 0 would have worked if a double up 0 is 1, but I, I didn't want to chance it. And that's a to the a to the a to the a. And now finally the recursion is done. And I've got a double up 4. It's just this chain of, of uh, exponentials. Okay, So that's how all the multiple up arrows work. Up, uh, up arrow n, or up arrow let's say n plus 1, is just repeated. Um, up arrow to the n. And so the, rec the recursive definition would be a up arrow, oops, I don't need that in the superscript position, a up arrow n plus 1 to the 1 is just a, that's what's going to terminate the recursion, and a up arrow n plus 1 uh, of Let's say, ooh, now I need something else. Actually, you know what? Let's do, let's make this like a p plus 1. Let's make that p. And then this. So notice how this is a bit like the Conway thing. We need two places for recursion. I'm re defining the p plus 1 the operation in terms of the p. That's a recursive definition. But each at each stage, to define the new guy, I'm supposed to define it recursively on all the numbers starting from 0. And so that's supposed to be starting from 1 in this case. There we go. 
and then saying, okay, what is it for the, if this number is n plus 1, as long as I can define it in terms of one lesser number, I'm going to be able to get this recursion that's going to make sense. So that's a, this new, more powerful p plus 1 up arrow operation to the, um, and that's just going to be a, oops, I keep wanting to make that an exponent, p, uh, a P N. There we go. Okay. So that that let's unpack that at least at least one time. Let's say we have a up arrow three, the triple up arrow of four. I don't need the parentheses. Okay. So that's gonna be what well, this thing says that's a triple up arrow of a double up arrow, three. So it says you're going to do still do some more triple up arrowing, don't worry, but you're going to be doing it to a double up arrow three. OK. And um, yep, and then a triple up arrow um, something, okay, is going to be a triple up, let's see, I've lost my train of thought here. Um, ah, that's where I got, got wrong. Uh, oop, okay, I don't want to redo this whole video. So that, that's, it's got, this got backwards. That's what, that's what happened. This is a P. There we go. If you were, it'd be pretty good if you caught that. If you caught that, congratulate yourselves. Okay, so let's let's do this again. Okay, a triple up four. Okay, so that's going to be a. So here, what I did wrong was here. It's the um, the previous operation, and is on the outside and the new operation but but with one less index is on the inside okay so that's going to be a double up there we go a it just it really was not working triple up uh three okay that should that should work so this is a triple up four so that's if I, can, if I already have calculated a triple up 3, I'm supposed to be able to do that. And I just put it inside an a double up. Okay? And so that's a double up. Now a triple up 3. By this rule, that's just an a double up, a double up 2, a triple up 2. Okay, we're getting there. That's a double up, a double up. This is one of those ones I should have prepared in advance, like some of those chained arrow ones. And then a triple up 2. One more application of this guy, it says it's a double up, a triple up one. Aha, but that's just a. Okay. And this is what we expected it to be. It's four A's put together, chained with double ups. Because the triple up means repeat the double up operations this many times. And so it all comes down to this. A base case, which is extremely just a default, simple, trivial thing. And then the idea of recursion. But now it's become a double recursion, that the new operation is defined recursively in, the old, in terms of the old operation and in terms of this number going down, down, down until it finally terminates. Okay. So, um, and then Conway, of course, is a very similar system, just flexible enough so that it, um, it's really, it kind of, in, in, involves another kind of recursion, which we're going to get to very very, sim very soon. But you could see that that was one I actually explicitly had. I laid out the recursive definition. Okay. So what I like about this way to restate it is that it really comes down to basics. It says that, in fact, this is the only arithmetic operation you ever really ha have, know, have to know how to do, have to know how to do. That's what I meant. And then everything else is just based on repetition, or in other words, recursion. So everything on the next level just means re repeatedly do the previous level, and multiplication, and exponentiation, and double up, and triple up, 
and even Conway, although I'm going to kind of go in a different d direction from the Conway notation uh, in the next video, defined in terms of just successorship and recursion. And there's one other trick that we're going to use to replicate the incredibly huge numbers and surpass the huge numbers that we got from like iterating these guys and then Conway, which automatically did that and more. But that's in the next video.